Why does every transport equation use the variable phi? What's phi? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today on the guts of CFD, we talk about the basic transport equation. This is something we refer to in CFD quite frequently. It's a language of communication that we use in CFD. You need to understand that language. Okay, but back up a minute. Before we go any further, what on earth is a transport equation? Basically, a transport equation is a general term for any one of the equations that we might solve in CFD. Now, they're all transport equations. There is a variable that is being transported along in CFD. It is being transported across the grid, it is being transported across the time domain, and that transport is what we're talking about. The reason we talk about transport is because we're actually concerned with how it's being transported, how well it's being transported, and that's the emphasis of the transport equation. We look at the different derivatives to understand how well they're working in different situations at different speeds. And that's what a transport equation discussion is, is we're emphasizing the derivatives. So let's dive into how that works. So I'm going to use the Navier-Stokes equation as a starting template to write a general transport equation. And I'm going to rearrange this to create some very specific groupings to emphasize their importance as we get to the end of this. And that's where my end goal here is. I want to show you some important groups from the transport equation. First thing I do is create this template here. I've dropped the pressure term. That's actually fairly specific to Navier-Stokes. You don't see that in many transport equations. I've also dropped all of the coefficients that are specific to that Navier-Stokes. In transport equations, we're not so much worried about the individual constants and coefficients we're much more worried about the derivatives and the actual variable being transported. And that's where you see the term phi comes in. Phi is sort of CFD shorthand for saying whatever the variable is that's being transported. It's saying that we're not actually interested in the specific variable, we're interested in the derivatives acting on that variable. And so you don't need to focus too much on the variable, that's what phi is saying. It's just a variable. We'll apply it to whatever the particular equation is. You do need to focus on the derivatives. Focus on the format of the equation, not the individual variables. Next thing I'm going to do is a little rearranging here. I took my total derivative here and broke out the time component from the other three dimensions. And I did that so then I can set, pull that over and group it with my other term. So now we've pulled that over and created a separate grouping on the left-hand side. And this is what I would call my general transport equation. I've put these into four specific groups for a very specific reason. So let's talk about the significance of these four groups. First off, we have the time variation component. So that's exactly what it sounds like. It's whatever the variable does changing in time. That's our fourth dimension. Next, we have the convective terms. The noplify, that's our gradient term. That's our first order derivative. Please note I'm using um, vector notation here for my calculus. And then the second part in there, that is the Laplacian term. That's my second order derivative. Then going over to the right hand side of my equation, that is all my diffusive terms. That is the curl of my variable. It is again a second order derivative, but it's a cross derivative. And then finally, over on the right, we have our source term, which are the things that just get generated. Now, why do I have them grouped like this? Well, time variation and source terms are, I would say, somewhat self-explanatory. Time variation is its own separate dimension, and source terms are things that just um, basically pop into being on their own right. However, the convective terms and the diffusive terms are sort of interesting on their own. Imagine this as a set of billiards balls, okay? Convective terms are the sets of derivatives where if you were to line up a set of billiards balls, 
they will hit one after the other after other after other in a row. All right. But the diffusive terms are the ones where if you were to stack them together in a triangle, they will hit one and then spread outwards, expanding the whole cascade. So the diffusive terms spread out from that central line. The convective terms continue in the original direction. And that's important to keep in mind with those two derivatives. Hold on though, I've been talking on and on about this. Why do you care? I mean, what, how does this relate back to actual practical applications? Or are you just trying to do this to sound smug? No, it does actually matter. The reason it matters is because the computer has different algorithms for handling these different types of derivatives. You pick those algorithms in many cases. The convective terms, they will have different sets of algorithms compared to the diffusive terms. Now, whether or not those algorithms are appropriate for your specific speed, now that's the kicker. They may not be appropriate for your specific speed. It really depends on which one, convective or diffusive, is the dominant term at your speed. That's the case. That's what you're going to be looking at. And that's why you're going to really be trying to understand convective, diffusive, you know, which ones are winning in your specific element. And then the last part of all of that was just understanding the language of all of it, understanding how it compares to each other. I introduced terms like gradient, Laplacian, curl. These are mathematical operations. They're part of vector calculus, but that's all part of the language of CFD. And it's part of understanding how all of these differential equations relate to each other. You yourself don't have to actually solve the equations, but you do have to understand that there are different techniques for solving them, and not all techniques work in all situations, and you may have to switch techniques at different spots. That's the key element to understand. So where do we stand now? Well, re reviewing everything, you remember Navier-Stokes equations. The key element behind that is that they are the Newton's laws of motions for fluids, force equals mass times acceleration. That's the basic idea behind Navier-Stokes. And then once we get into our transport equations, the main thing here is that you need to be able to recognize convective versus diffusive terms. Convective terms are the different, <clears throat> convective terms are the derivatives that are continuing along the original vector line. Diffusive terms are the ones that are spreading out away from the original direction. I hope this has helped explain a little bit more about the internal guts of CFD and some of the mathematics behind it. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.